So I'm the survivor of three failed saline infusion abortions. What that means is during the time that my mother was pregnant with me, I was the baby and she tried to abort me three different times. A lot of times when people hear the term abortion survivor, they have no real place for that on their mental map. So they kind of scroll through this little mental menu of, oh, you must have had three abortions yourself. And so we have to tell people, no, I was the baby. <laughs> so that, that would be me. I was the baby. Uh, this year at the March for Life, which we're having this week here in D.C., we're celebrating that this is our very first post-row March for Life. And we are so, so thrilled about that. Praise God. During that very politically charged uh, climate, my mother found herself pregnant when Roe was first enacted. So I was born March 28th, 1974. And during the time that Roe and Doe were first being fought for and won in the courts and all those things, um, my mother found herself a successful career woman. She was uh, leading the business department at Delsey Regional High School in Glassboro, New Jersey. She was happily married. My dad ran the vending department. So they each had a, a wonderful spot in the high school that they worked in. I remember as a kid, they, they had a lot of friends in the faculty. They had a, a nice little home, had cats and a dog. And so what we would perceive as, you know, kind of the typical American family, two school teachers, cats, dog, nice little home, everything is happy, except... When my mom found herself pregnant, she was so focused on her career, and she really wasn't able to connect with other people the way that you and I connect. And we didn't know that for many years later. The idea of connecting with a baby and nurturing that child was just so foreign to her. And she just was so focused on career that she went down the road of, hmm, I'm going to focus on my job. I'm not going to worry about this. This is just a clump of tissue. That's what they told me when I went to the doctor. This is not a baby yet. This is a choice. And so she went and had her very first saline infusion abortion. In that procedure, a deep needle was inserted through mom's tummy. It drew off a whole bunch of that life-giving amniotic fluid that was surrounding me in the womb. And then it replaced it with a toxic solution that was salty. It was meant to burn me to death. And normally in a saline infusion abortion, they would induce labor a couple days later. Mom would expel a dead baby and supposedly go on with life. Now we know that there are mental, emotional, and physical traumas that impact mom with any abortion attempt. But we also found out that when mom went back to have labor induced, I was still alive. So rather than expelling a dead baby, they inserted a second needle, drew off more of that life-giving amniotic fluid, repeated the entire procedure, sent her home with a fresh batch of that toxic solution inserted into the womb with me. So now I'm swimming in not one but two doses of that toxic solution. Obviously, the baby also gulps that down, so mm -hmm. my, my first meals were very salty. <laughs> I, very horrible way to go through life is um, thinking about these things. But she went back, supposed to have labor induced, and again, they found signs of life. So not once, not twice, but a third time, she went through that entire procedure. How I survived, we don't know, except by the grace of God. She went back to have labor induced, and this time, they didn't know I was still alive. They did know it was very complicated. So I grew up in South Jersey. That's where my parents lived. The um, big hospitals were in Philly. So that's where you would go if you had any um, complications or any issues that really required a lot of intensive treatment. So they sent her to Philly. And from what my dad told me, as well as my grandmother and my mom's best friend at the time, they, they had no layette, they had no bag pack, they had no name picked out for me because they were fully expecting mom is going to go expel a dead baby. They're going to kind of patch her up and send her home. They get to the hospital the morning of March 28th in 1974, and the nurse comes out and asks for the pregnant lady. Well, the pregnant lady 
was my mom. She was so wrapped up in her career and in her image. She had a very beautiful figure. She was a beautiful lady who actually was the daughter of a model. So my Grammy did some modeling. Um, she actually ran a ladies' finishing school in Bern, Germany, before they came over to America. Wow. So I grew up with the, the grandmother who taught me how to sit properly and all the things that I have promptly forgotten, as you can tell if you're watching this video. <laughs> But uh, mom kind of lived in the shadow of that, and she wasn't tall enough to be a model. In those days, you had to be a certain height, and we are petite, so that was off the table. But she was doing, from what I'm told, 50 sit-ups a day and had kept her figure to such an extent that when the nurse came out to call this pregnant lady, mom stood up, and the nurse kind of laughed at her and said, oh, no, honey, we want the pregnant lady. You are obviously not great with child. My dad was there with her driving and was ha had to explain, no, you know, she really is the pregnant lady. Wow. And so I always thought about what is that in your mind? If you had been pregnant and gone through abortions, do you still consider yourself pregnant before the baby is expelled? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. What do we call that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I always wondered what was going through her mind. But anyway, there's a thought for you for, for this morning. She goes back with the nurse, not looking like she's pregnant at all. As a matter of fact, her tummy was still flat. Wow. Um, and so they get her into the room, get her all comfortable. They induce. She expels me, and I come out very much alive. Much to her chagrin. This was not her plan. Dad, on the other hand, dad had lost his first wife and baby to a drunk driver in a car accident. Oh, my gosh. So he was absolutely thrilled. He wasn't on board with the abortions, but he didn't feel like he had a voice there. So when I was born, dad was pleading for me very much the way you would if you brought home a puppy and you're trying to convince your family, you know, can we keep it? Can we keep it? So that was dad, very excited. And as I'm told by my mom's best friend and my grandmother, there was a little bird who landed on the window ledge that morning. And so mom finally looked over, saw this little bird and said, fine, name it Robin Dawn. And that's my name. That's beautiful. Thank you. 